most people in Project Zomboy tend to stick to one of the four original playstyles. These are the intended way of playing the game, so it makes sense they're the most popular. Unfortunately, that does mean the challenges are kind of slept on. Like, when was the last time somebody told you their favorite way of playing Zomboid was the studio challenge? That's why today I decided to play all of the Zomboid challenges. And after each one, I'll rate it 1 through 10. So without further ado, let's get into the first and probably the most well-known challenge, really CDDA. In this challenge, we're immediately tossed into a burning house with nothing but glass in our... Huh. And since that clearly wasn't enough of a bad day, you're also drunk and sick and cold and bleeding. I quickly realized the only way I was gonna survive would be by running away using this Jeez. cheese trick. Yeah, if you use click to walk and you hold shift, your character will start the running animation regardless of what condition it's in. Using this power, I just ran away. Unfortunately, there is a lot of zombies around here, and every time I sneeze, I attract more. The zombies are still on me, but at least I managed to bandage myself a little bit. The main problem I was having with this challenge was the fact that I was constantly coughing. Even if I lost the zombies, they would just find me again. Another one. Another one. Another one. Eventually, I actually got enough time to steal the clothes from a zombie corpse. Ow. Even this desolate house, literally surrounded by a tall wall, is full of zombies. Yeah, no, I'm gonna be honest. The Storm is Coming is kind of a nothing burger challenge. While the ambience you get from being in the rain is pretty cool, it does really force you to change the way you play. It's really not that challenging. And although it doesn't change much, it's still a cool looking challenge. So maybe just give this one a try if you want a slightly different way of playing the average survival experience. House in the Woods, also known as The Last Stand, is one of the more interesting game modes we have here. In this one, you're given a bunch of loot and you're basically just meant to try and survive. Of course, at the start, you only have to deal with a couple of zombies here and there. This is essentially the time you're supposed to use to reinforce the house. The waves of zombies will get exponentially more intense, with more and more coming your way. Your goal is just to survive as they keep coming. In this mode, things get out of hand pretty quickly. One minute, you'll be fighting three zombies, and before you realize it, you're here. Well, you can't really do much after you've run out of ammo, that is sort of the point. In this mode, you're just meant to see how long you can survive. Overall, this challenge is pretty cool, even if really only the first time. Still, I think it deserves at least a 7.5 out of 10. This is one of the best challenges, in my opinion. It's basically the same as Last Stand Accumulator, but you have a mini-map showing you where the zombies are, and you can buy gear each round. If you look at the top right, you'll notice we have some info here. This tells us how much money we have, how many zombies are left in the wave, and how long we've spent on a certain wave. When we press O, we get this little info box. Here you can buy gear, repair your weapons, and 
even upgrade your character's levels. The zombies in Last Stand Accumulator also scale a lot slower than in the regular Last Stand. Here you can actually survive the early waves. I personally think that this challenge actually has a lot of potential. As it stands right now, it's cool, but there's a lot of things they could do to make it better. In particular, I think that if the Indie Stone added new maps and new items to the store, it could actually be really fun, especially as a multiplayer thing. Being able to hold out in a spot against endless waves of zombies with your friends sounds like a pretty fun experience. Overall, the Last Stand Accumulator is actually a really good challenge. It has unique mechanics, and it's actually really fun, even after the first time playing it. Overall, I'm gonna rate the Last Stand Accumulator a 9 out of 10. Definitely check it out if you want a break from the regular survival, or if you just want to get some combat training. Kingsmouth? Uh, is it Kingsmouth? Kingsmouth? King's Mouth. Yeah, no, I just refuse to believe that. King's Mouth is actually a pretty interesting challenge. Unlike the ones before, which relied on different gameplay, this one puts you in a new map. Unlike the regular Zomboid map, it's actually pretty small, but that doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, there's some very cool locations to explore around here. For example, you have this little golf course thing and some cool tennis courts. If you're getting sick of the environments of the regular Zomboid map, you should definitely check this map out. It also has some places that seem like they would be ridiculously cool for base spots. Like this area here with some shipping containers and two gas pumps. I just know this would go crazy hard as a base. Overall, the map is pretty cool, and you should definitely check this challenge out if you're getting bored of the regular map. Also, here's another pretty crazy base spot. Maybe I should make a video transforming areas into bases. Leave a comment if you think that would be pretty cool. I'm a Studio is a pretty strange challenge. We start off at night time, and originally I didn't know why this was. Of course, being a completely sane person, I decide to sit indoors all night until the sun rises. Now with some light, I could see that the zombies here are actually slow shamblers for some reason. The zombies quickly lost my interest as I realized this is also a unique map. Not sure what this one is trying to be though. I quickly head into a restaurant of sorts to look for some loot. I then spent an unreasonable amount of time in this kitchen, fighting. And all of that for absolutely no loot. Yeah, this challenge is pretty boring. It suffers from the same problem as the storm one. The only real challenge is that there's a permanent weather condition, which really isn't that much. In this one, it's just permanent fog, so it's zomboid, but you can't see as far. Wow. If you ever feel like playing zomboid, but not being able to see anything, Hey, check this challenge out. Maybe you'll find it fun. For me though, having the most annoying weather condition, but permanently, makes this a uh, 3 out of 10. 
Winter is coming is particularly interesting because the winter coming is the least interesting part about it. You see, as soon as I step outside, it's pretty obvious that something is different here. This seems to be a six months later challenge, with a cryogenic winter added on top. While this challenge is cool, I will warn you that it has a ridiculous quantity of zombies. If you think I'm stupid enough to sit for three days in one save file just waiting to see some snow, I'm not. And I didn't. So instead I'm gonna rate this one based on the fact that the 10 years later mod is fun and that the cryogenic winter mod is fun. So both of them together are probably fun. 7 out of 10. You Have One Day is the last challenge on the list and it's pretty good. In this mode you have 24 hours to prepare before infinite zombies start raining down on you. You've probably seen it on one of these beautiful videos by better creators than me. And honestly, this might be one of the more well-known challenges. Well, there's a lot of ways you can theoretically min-max this situation, I just decided to cheese my way through it. All I did was break the floor leading up the stairs so zombies couldn't pathfind to me, and got some food storage. Sure, I will starve to death here, which is a pretty horrible death, but it'll take a while as we have quite a lot of food in these houses. Overall, this challenge is fun, and being on the original Zomboid map just adds to it. 8 out of 10.